So, all right. So, today, uh, before we continue from the previous lecture, I will just give an example of an application of matrix which is different from solving linear equations. There is a problem from tutorial sheet. So, there is a uh, matrix of transition probabilities is given. So, we are writing some land use in a city area in some, some time 2003. It says residential 30 percent, commercial 20 percent, industrial 50 percent. So, it says that there are some probabilities after 5 years, there are probabilities are given why, how and what with what probability area will change into another kind of, another, another use, another kind of use. So, uh, how the land use changes, those probabilities are given, they are given in this matrix. So, this for example, this uh, entry point 0.2, there is only 1.2, that is a probability of uh, commercially used land to become industrial after 5 years. There is a, a continuous change, for example, 0, 0.0 means that uh, 3, 1, that is uh, that uh, Industrial will never become residential, most likely. So, that kind of probabilities matrix is given. Then we have to estimate in various years 2008, 2013, 2018, what will the percentage of land use of for various kinds of uses, various kinds of activities. So, we just rec recapitulate. So, this is called such a matrix called a stochastic matrix, and these probabilities are given. R to R means residential to res residential, that is pointed. Pointed is the probability that residential area will remain residential. Then uh, the C to R, commercial becomes residential, and I to R, industrial becomes residential. Those probabilities are given. I think the last entry was 0, 0.0. That means industrial is never likely to become a residential area. So that kind of. So to compute the land use after five years, we have to do a, a matrix multiplication. So, if R0, C0, I0 is initial use, usage in percentage, after 5 years it will become RCI, RC, R0, C0, I0 times S. So, because of uh, row by column multiplication, R0 into probability of R that is actually pointed, then uh, probability of C0 becoming R will multiply, and then probability of industrial becoming R that will multiply, that will give total R after 5 years. So, like that we can use this matrix multiplication and estimate the land usage after 5 years. So, after 5 years, 2003, the data is 30, 20, 50. In 2008, it is likely to become 26 percent, 22 percent, 52 percent. So, this town planning, okay. Because it started 30, 20, 50. So, after this uh, 30 are residential, that will become probably of that 24 percent will remain as residential, then from commercial another 2 percent may become residential, that is 26 and then from uh, industrial it never becomes uh, residential, so that does not contribute, so let us get 26. So, similarly for commercial use uh, first row and then second column, okay. So, that is the result in 2008. So, what is the result in 2013? So, in 2013 uh, use the result of 2008, so you can estimate the result for 2013. And like finally, what, what you want is in 2018, the estimate is something like this 20.7, so about 21 percent residential, about 24 percent commercial, and some 55 percent or so industrial use. So, this is how the dynamics will change, the, the land use is likely to change over the years. Now, one remark I want to make is that. Uh, one can directly compute by multiplying the 2003 situation by S cube directly because first we did S, then another S, then another S. But because of associativity, you can put all these S together and take S cube and multiply directly to the, that is that, that is illustration of associativity of matrix multiplication. And the second remark I want to make is there is something called equilibrium solution. This is an equilibrium solution. How we obtain, I will, I will not tell you now. So, this, this solution is such that even if, when changes have taken place, still you get the same you land use. Now, so these are another kind of problem in linear algebra that we will solve in the fourth week, okay. So, some matrix, how to find the equilibrium point. Actually, what happens is uh, in this kind of things, if you, as, uh, 
uh, actually, but I don't think we, we, can, we, we cannot prove that in our course, but I think that S cube and as you go to S power n, it will, uh, everything will, uh, the, as n goes, n becomes larger and larger, it will converge, the, the land use will converge to this value. You can see that uh, it is slowly decreasing, the uh, residential part is decreasing from 26 becomes 23, then from 22 to 20.7. So you keep on applying it and at infinity, you are likely to get that 12.5. So that is the equilibrium point. So slowly, things move towards equilibrium. But of course, this is analysis and we are not, we are doing only algebra, so we won't study infinite processes. So it, it just, I am just remarking. So this, uh, this is an example. Now we go, come back to our linear algebra. So uh, this, uh, I am thankful to one of the students, <laughs> two, three students, they asked about vectors in RN and then I realized that uh, we are so used to, because of our mathematics training that we didn't think that others can get confused because for generally when we start in uh, high school and all vectors are are arrows. Huh? There, so there's a starting point and end point and, then, and a direction to that. So that is vector. But uh, what I keep on saying is uh, n by 1 column vector, column vector. So uh, there is some confusion uh, about this. So, so let me draw some simple thing, a diagram, a little bit of diagram. So I will use the, I just use R2, R2 is a two coordinate axis, is a plane, x axis, y axis, so it is a plane on which coordinates have, uh, coordinate axis have been drawn. Uh, what is uh, R2? R2 is a plane on which coordinate axis have been drawn. The one is called x axis, other is called y axis. So what is the effect? As soon as you draw axis in the plane, each geometric point gets coordinates. So, so, he, so if it is not there, this is just a point P. But once we have drawn, this becomes something, say for example, 1.7, 3.8, something like some number, pair of numbers. So they are, these are called coordinates, okay. So of course we, we can we write x, y. So this is x here, y here. So, so, so this is, uh, so similarly for Rn, a any point in Rn, because already when we write Rn, there is a 0, 0, 0, there is a 1, 0, 0, there is a 0, 1, 0, these are all elements in Rn. Rn means R cross R cross or n times. So there is a point 0 here, then there is this, uh, you can, call, if I can put T here, T 0, zero. this is our x1 axis, where T goes from minus infinity. This is, uh, say, okay, let me call T1, T. This is a x2 axis. So the axis are already drawn now in n space, and there is origin and there are axis. So each point in Rn gets coordinates. In fact, by definition, each point comes with coordinates, and these coordinates are relative to these axes, these origin and these axes. So, so these are these are geometric points in Rn. So in when you have geometric points in Rn, they automatically become vectors. Why? Because by default, the point of application is origin. There is an origin, zero zero because it's R2, so there's a 0, 0. So automatically this is a point of application, this is understood. Work <laughs> for us it is just given. And this is a point, so automatically you have an arrow. So point and vectors are interchangeable in Rn. And it is useful to view every point as a vector. And of course it is also useful to view it as a point also. So point, vector, interchangeable in Rn when you have coordinates. Then next is uh, how we add ve vector by saying uh, x1 plus y1, x2 plus x and y. So this is xy and this suppose q. So in R2, in R2 we add this is our rule of addition entry wise or coordinate wise. So this will give another point x plus p, 
y plus q. So it it will it turns out it can also be proved easily geometrically that it is exactly the point which you will obtain by drawing this parallelogram. So it is here exactly. Here. So you have two vectors. You have to draw parallelogram and take the appropriate diagonal end and that is sum of two vectors. But uh, by this uh, reuse or this uh, idea of putting coordinates, you avoid writing, drawing arrows, parallelogram, etc. Just add coordinates by mechanically. But geometry or physics has become algebra. Simple work, clerical job. Okay, a physicist or engineer will have to draw arrows, draw parallelogram. Geometer will do all that and find the sum. A clerk will just add x1 to y1, x2 to y2. That's the sum. So that's the same. Okay. So the difficult job of a geometry or physics has been reduced to a simple job of, of a clerical job of adding numbers. So that viewpoint will uh, prevail throughout this course. Okay. So points of Rn are vectors by default. And when we add two vectors, we are not doing any subterfuge, we are actually using parallelogram law of addition. So this is genuine vector addition. So with this understanding, the coordinates become the components and we can treat them interchangeably. Sometimes we call them components, sometimes we call them coordinates, just like sometimes we call points, sometimes we call vector. And this is exactly the sum we obtained, which we have defined entry by sum. So so I wanted to start here, vector spaces in Rn, then suddenly yesterday I realized that even vectors in Rn are not proper, our, our language, we are not on the same page about that with the students, so I am thinking directly points at vector and then assuming that you also think like that. So before I put that extra slide, how, what are vectors in Rn, now vector spaces in Rn, so larger object. So a subset in Rn is called a vector space. If for any two points uh, and two scalars, the so-called linear combination A B plus B W, B W is also in the same vector space. So, uh, the uh, so this equation, this uh, condition, can be broken into two parts also. This uh, this can be broken into two simpler parts. One so what it means is given two vectors in uh, two vectors in, in the subset B, the sum of those two vectors should also be in the same subset B. And given any vector and a scalar, it's uh, all its uh, scalar multiples should also be in the same set B. So this is a vector space. And we will give some examples. These are the flats I was talking about. So we, first we will do this formal definition, then we will do some little bit of geometry to better understand why, why is it flat spaces passing through origin. First of all, origin has to be there because if any vector, if it is non-empty, I should have written probably non-empty. So uh, if V is there, 0 times V has to be there by this hypothesis. So origin has to be there, it has to pass through origin. And if some vector is there, uh, so it, say it is, let us say this is Rn, and suppose there is a plane through origin, then if you take any vector on this plane, then all multiples, the whole line passing through origin and through this vector will lie on this plane only, because this plane is already passing through origin. So this condition is satisfied. Okay. Secondly, if there are two vectors on the plane, you will do addition coordinate wise, but actually it will be parallelogram law. So that parallelogram law will stay in that same, in, uh, the parallelogram will stay in the same plane when you are starting from origin. So this sum, that will also be part of this plane. 
So this plane is an example of a vector space. A plane through origin is an example of a vector space. Similarly, a line through origin is an example of a vector space. Because V, only lambda Vs are there. And uh, only such objects, these are, uh, these are obviously flat, straight flat objects which extend to infinity in all directions. So they are the only kinds of vector spaces. In R3, only vector spaces are just single origin. That's a vector space by default because uh, VW can only be origin. So you <laughs> origin plus origin is origin. And A times origin is also origin. Origin means 0, 0, 0. So 0 is the most trivial vector space. The whole of Rn is of course a vector space because you take any n tuples and add, you get another n tuple only. But what we are interested in? Some more than just 0 and whole space, like lines and planes in R3. So more such spaces. And one of prime example is null space of a matrix. So if, if you take null space, this is a vector in Rm. So A is an M by N matrix. This is acting on N, N space and produces zero vector. Those vectors which produce zero vector. All right. So that, that is, so that's a null space. It's called null space of matrix A and that's a vector space because if uh, two vectors, if there are two vectors x and y here satisfying this, then x plus y will also satisfy this equation. Understand? So if A of x is 8, A times x is 0, A times y is 0, then A times x plus y will also be 0. That's how matrix multiplication works. A or A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. All right. And uh, likewise, if you have some uh, scalar times X, that scalar will come out. That's another rule of matrix multiplications. If a single scalar is there, it just can be passed on anywhere from here, 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 anywhere. So a lambda times X will come here, lambda will come here, then AX is of course 0, so lambda times 0 will get again 0. So all these, both these properties are satisfied or you can check directly this one. If A of B is 0 and A of W is 0, then A of AB plus BW will be A of AB plus B of AW, which is A times 0 plus B times 0, that is 0. So that is a null space is a vector space. Of course, it passes through origin because if you, if x is 0, automatically you will get 0, a times 0 will be 0. Then similarly, a range space of a matrix is also origin, it is also a vector space. Range space of a matrix is also a vector space. So we have studied matrices as maps from Rn to Rm, then the range is just all the whole image set, the image set is again a vector space. So you can check it, I, I will not check it, you will check it maybe some, some other time. So if there is any other vector space, it can be realized as a null space of some space. So it seems that uh, there are, I mean any vector space is null space of some matrix. So these are the only kinds of vector spaces. Similarly, any vector space is also a range of some vector space. These things we will be able to do it more uh, easily when we have done some more linear algebra, maybe in the last week. So we, we can have any, any vector space can be realized as a null space. And any vector space can also be realized as a range space. So these are some of the points we want to make. So look at this set in R2, x, y such that x square plus y square equal to 1. That is not a vector space, it's a subset of R2. And uh, probably all you know, <laughs> it is circle, unit circles around origin. It cannot be vector space. If x, y is there, 2x, 2y will not be there. That is 2 times x, y will not be there, okay. Even some will not be there because we have any two points you take. In fact, some of, uh, almost any two points will not be there. But some will be, uh, it will immediately go outside. Now we are coming to that point that uh, a vector space must pass through origin, it doesn't even pass through origin. And it will be some straight flat object. When you look at this parabola, y square is equal to 4ax, it passes through origin, all right. But again, you take a, a point here, 
this is a, this is in v or our set set parabola now its scalar multiples they are not here or if you want take x and y there's some somewhere outside so such objects cannot be okay then we have some other example i can give you this is called so called cone in three space if you take any point on the cone the whole line through this point is on the cone only because this is a cone passing through origin take any point on the cone the whole line through origin passing through that point is on the cone so this property okay but if you take some say vector here and a vector here and take the sum it will fall something on the say z axis it is not on the cone this is not there so is again it is a curved object curved object will not work as vector spaces yeah second last me a uh, b is no any vector space uh, range of a vector space is again a vector space no, sorry range of a matrix that is if you take all the vectors take all the vectors in the in the domain and hit them by b so you get some collection in rn sorry r uh, what have i written n by m ha huh? so you'll get some collection in rm that collection again is a flat and if you want to prove it okay proof is uh, boring it is not as easy as for null space but uh, it's not it is it is easy that's all so how to prove it you have to uh, get used to little bit of mathematical reasoning, reasoning. so b r m so suppose b and w belong to so this how you write uh, set theory huh? suppose v w belong to b r m what does it mean this implies we are not doing set theory that is x y in r m such that b is equal to b x and w is equal to b y okay they have pre images this implies v plus w is equal to right short plus short cut it is v plus w is a image of something so so therefore this is here and now similarly a okay so it's not as easy it's not very easy it is easy okay so that's all okay so so these so these are this is start convincing you that only some kind of flat objects extending to infinity in all directions within that object only such things are vector spaces any kind of smallest curvature will rule rule out vector space property so there are two ways of producing vector spaces one was null space one was range space and third method of producing vector spaces via linear spans this will be this is the only uh so the new new uh, new idea in this course and you will have to just get used to it it will take take some time to get used to this idea of linear spans oh one more example i forgot to give okay i'll just give it and leave it so in r2 you consider a particular set uh, which uh, we uh, so you take only integral points so when you take two vectors uh, v uh, v and w here their sum will again have coordinates which are integers so this property will be satisfied but this will not be satisfied for example this will be here but 0.5 times this won't be there
so this is bulldog so it is some kind of roughly flat it's a lattice but it's not a vector space because it doesn't contain lines to origin full, full lines to origin should be there so cone has this property cone satisfies this property but does not satisfy this property the integral point satisfies this property but don't satisfy this property and of course others are curved objects they cannot be vector space circles parabola spheres there is no way it can be vector space so the third and the last method to produce vector spaces is via linear spans so what is the linear span so if uh, they are take a finite set of vectors in rn then take so called linear combination all linear combinations c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus ck vk so in here in this uh, ls v1 v2 vk are fixed we have chosen them but c1 c2 ck are pre take any all kinds of values so you will get lots of vectors and that collection will be a vector space and that collection is called linear span of this set s and that linear span will automatically be a vector space <laughs> and that, that is again you can do in your mind uh, you take a vector v in ls in your mind you can think that v must uh, the vector v must look like c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus ck vk the another vector w it will look like some c1 dash v1 plus c2 dash v2 plus ck dash vk not think of v plus w it will look like exactly c1 plus c1 dash times v1 plus c2 plus c2 dash times v2 plus ck plus vk ck dash times vk so again again ls it's already there and likewise for scalar multiples so this is a vector space and how uh, what happens actually is the following maybe uh, i'll come to example then we'll explain more details Yeah, I hope there is an example. Now. So this theorem, of course, I have already proved this theorem. Just proof is just think a little bit. Of course, again, a remark is there. Every linear space, every vector space is a linear span. Just like I said, every vector space is a null space. Every vector space is a range space. Similarly, every vector space is also a linear span. These things will be clear very soon. So let us look at an example. So yes, I have taken some arbitrary three vectors in R two. I just put two minus four, one, nine, three, five, and suppose call this set S v one, v two, v three. Then the linear span of this v one, v two, v three is whole of R two. So linear span of v one, v two, v three is same as linear span of v one, v two. Is same as linear span of v two, v three. Same as linear span of v one, v three. It is the whole of R two. So what it means uh, that when you have a linear span. by a set s that set may have some redundancy so see linear span is whole of r2 from for the set s but even if you drop v3 still you get r2 okay if you drop uh, v1 still you get r2 so reason is uh, v, what is v1 so you so you can do systematically so let us start with v1 v1 is somewhere uh, here okay so let us take linear span of v1 so what is linear span of v1 all the vectors of the type c v1 where c is in rn ah uh, c is a scalar there is only one so you will get this line the so linear span of single vector is a line through origin which is a vector space is a vector space obviously yeah because some property is obviously satisfied just we are adding two vectors in a parallel to each other and some will again be parallel to the same it will lie in the same space now this is a v1 and then what is v2 v2 is some uh, here i come here here so let us take its its span also so this v this line can be thought of as r times v1 so these are all c1 v1s and this line is r times v2 is all c2 v2s now span of v1 and v2 means c1 v1 plus c2 v2 so take r pre vectors here r pre vector here and add and addition of course we know you have to do coordinate wise but here we will do parallelogram law because we know they are same so you take any two vector it will give some vector here and likewise you take any vector you can draw uh, if you draw carefully and what else huh? if you draw carefully then you will find some C two V two some C one V one said that vector is sum of that. So every point of R two is sum of C one V one plus C two V two can be written. So whole span R two 
the linear span of V1 and V2 is pole of R2. And what are this V3, V3 is already there. So, if you add V3, it will not produce anything new. Okay. So, if you take uh, C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus C3, V3, then what is uh, this V3 is some 3, 5, uh, some somewhere here V3. It is already a sum of two things, some A times V2 plus or A times V1 plus B times V2. So, this is already some V3 is already some A V1 plus B V2. Then you just uh, add everything, we will get C1 plus C3 A V1 uh, some C2 plus C3 B V2 and nothing new has come, already again span of V1 V2. So, this is a way you produce vector spaces using finite sets in Rn. Just take all linear combinations or you can do systematically, take first one vector, then adjoin second vector, adjoin third, fourth, you can keep on increasing. and uh, Sometimes there may not be any increase because that may already be there and the next step again there will be increase. So, now we have to study all these things. So, if you take, if you drop two vectors then you will not get R2. So, you can, so there is some optimal numbers, okay. And of course, we will all define all these things properly. So, you can drop any one Vj without affecting the linear span. But you cannot drop two, the linear span will shrink to a line. We already discussed these things. So, now to formalize these things, we define something called linear independence. Yeah. Yeah, no, V3, if you if you even try to put a V3, it converts into V1, V2. That is what I am trying to say. That is, you do not get anything new. V3 is already here, this is V3 can be written as some A time B times V2 plus A times V1. So, if you draw it properly, you will get this some A times, oh sorry here, not here, here, some A times V1 and then somewhere up B times V2. So, anything can be written as something times V1 plus something times V2. So, in particular, Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, i, j, k in R3, v1 is i, v2 is j, v3 is k. But in R2, it cannot happen. That's so, all these things we are going to formalize the so called dimension. Of course, you can, you can do one thing, you can take uh, uh, say 1, 0, then 2, 0. Then 1, 1 for example, if you take this, then you cannot uh, drop uh, this one, this has to be there. Now, you cannot drop this one. We can drop this or this, but not this, yeah. All these things we will formulate. Okay, yeah, that is another point which has come up nice. So, suppose there is a finite set of vectors and there are some scalars, then of course, we have already defined this is called a linear combination of V1, V2, Vk, so we already defined this at least orally. So, again the linear span is that, so linear independence. So, this uh, set is called linearly independent. If whenever this uh, linear combination becomes 0, it forces C1, C2, Ck to be 0, that is the only way. Uh, uh, the set uh, the combination can become 0. So, this such a this is called linear independence. Now, this kind of things uh, you might have seen in uh, your vector algebra uh, in the following way. This kind of definition you might have seen some this criterion of three vectors 
being coplanar. Of course, we in R3 we say three vectors are coplanar because we are thinking of vectors as arrows. But now we have to be careful. We are thinking of vectors only as points. So we have, we have add the word with with zero. Okay. So these three arrows may not be coplanar, but three points are always coplanar. That confusion should not be there. So, but so therefore I I I add the word coplanar with origin. That means these arrows will be coplanar. So this happens only if one of the vectors is a is in the plane of the other two, and that is the condition. So non-coplanar will mean whenever this thing happens, all these three must be zero because that will always solve. Okay? Zero 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 will always <laughs> give zero. So that same condition is taken over in R n. So some few set of vectors is independent if and only if a combination can vanish if and only if every coefficient is zero. So this is the this is the only hardest part in this course just just to get used to this definition. So we can show as some student pointed out <laughs> pointed out below uh, sorry uh, before uh, the, we have an exercise above is equivalent to saying that no vj can be expressed as a linear combination of the remaining ones. Suppose you can write vk as c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus ck vk uh, v, ck minus 1 vk minus 1 then what will happen you, it is same thing as c1 v1 plus ck minus 1 vk minus 1 minus uh, plus minus 1 times vk is 0. So at least this one is not 0, at least minus 1 is not 0, it is not, so same thing. So this can be, it is equivalent to saying no vj can be expressed as a linear combination of the remaining ones. And similarly we have, uh, sim this is just analog of three vectors being non-coplanar. Uh, this is just to uh, emphasize that this de uh, dependence and dependence definition we do not uh, use, uh, of course uh, it is there V, W are vectors, but whenever there is, there is a collection which, which satisfies this property that sum is there, scalar multiple is there, then we can talk of these things. Uh, this will be useful when we do abstract vector space in the last week. So that exercise shows that when you take linear span, then no vector can be dropped. If you drop any vector, the linear span will shrink, will become smaller. So that is there is no redundancy. The linear independence is a way of checking that there is no redundancy in this in the spanning set. So when you take linear span, we know that there can be sometimes extra element which will not increase the span. But if the set is independent, then there is no redundancy. Every element must be taken to produce the full span. Of course, there is some <laughs> trivial example as somebody has asked. So in R3 we can have some vector V1, V2, V3, then the set is linearly independent set. So how do you prove it? Suppose assume C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus C3, V3 is 0, then immediately you will get C3 is 0, then you will get C2 plus C3 is 0 which means C2 is 0 and then C1 plus C2 plus C3 is 0 which is both C, all 3 must be 0. So if you take linear combination and make it 0 vector, Automatically, you will get C1, C2, C3 must be 0. This is straightforward exercise. So, I have given very trivial, you can do it in mind. Of course, there can be complicated things that you have to actually solve. Alright, it is clear. You take C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 plus C3 times V3, then you will get the vector C1 plus C2 plus C3, uh, C2 plus C3, and then C3, and that is 0, 0, 0. Imagine C3 has to be 0, then therefore it follows that C2 must be 0, so it follows that C1 must be 0. So, they are linearly independent. In fact, they are, you can draw them actually and you can see that they are not, not coplanar. This is V1, this is V2 and then V3 will be some outside this XY plane in the Z, there is a one component in Z direction. And of course, as we already observed, the set S is not linearly independent because say 3, 5 can be written as a linear combination of 2, minus 4 and the uh, 1, 9 or even something better I think this is, some one example is given. 
if you take that uh, c1 to be 1, c2 to be 1 and c2 to be minus 1, then you will get 0, 0, 0. So, it is linearly dependent. Whenever you can find scalars, not all of which are 0, then we say the set is linearly dependent. The independent is opposite of independent. So, this is all I will stop with this definition. So, if B is any vector space, a subset B is called a basis, if B is a linearly independent set and the linear span is B. And the dimension of V is the number of elements needed to produce V, that is called dimension. So, if B has 4 elements and none of them can be dropped, then you will get a 4 dimensional space. So, number of elements required to generate minimum number and uh, elements required to span a space is called a dimension of that space. So, for example, R2 has dimension 2, R1 has dimension 1, R3 has dimension 3, etc., and then Rn, of course. 